All right, what's up? What's good? I'm wearing my shirt from my local comic book um, store, Corka, Corka Comics in, in, in Pembroke Pines, Florida. Um, it's my local comic book store. I got beef with them, and I like them all the same. So it's, it's a regular relationship. Hopefully, you'll develop a relationship with your local comic book store. Anyway, I'm going to try to talk about this um, question that comes up every once in a while and I really don't have a blog that specifically answers it um, and I've alluded to it and other blogs and uh, I just want to try to take it head on and that is um, why uh, the struggle with African American um, sci-fi and I'm just going to say Let's not, you know, not calling it black sci-fi for a moment. Calling it African American sci-fi. Okay, um, when we look at um, mainstream uh, the, uh, big publishers, right? Um, publishing a lot of, of, of um, say, female, a lot of African American-born. Um, writers as opposed to um, African American writers and when I say African American reparations getting cotton picking ancestors you know from the south you know from a city parents both from America no Caribbean no African parents not the first born none of that I'm talking about yo we go back you know um, collard green um, cornbread eating black folks, right? So, um, what's the challenge with that um, in terms of getting these um, type of writers signed? Um, one, we're dealing with a response in many ways to um, mainstream history where most of the sci-fi writers in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s were white men. And um, kind of the opposite of white man is a black woman, right? So I think um, there's a lot of interest in that. I'm not saying that they're not better. No doubt. I'm saying that they, they're they good. All the women that um, uh, have gotten... Uh, publishing deals, I'm reading one now, Tomei, right? They're good, and um, no slant against them. However, I'll, I'll say that um, black sci-fi is mixed. It's not a female-dominated, I don't know if it's even a male-dominated subgenre. I know that there is a mix within the total totality of what black sci-fi is. And I don't know people that play men against women. So I think it is a very honest portrayal of the genre. Um, anybody can write a book. Anybody can publish the book on Amazon. So that Amazon or Kindle or um, Nook, none of these um, outlets discriminate, right? So the opportunities are equal. So on the equal playing field of e-publishing, self-publishing, it's a very balanced um, um, field, you know? So if you're a male, if you're a female, you want to write, poof, get write your story, put it out there, you know? So I don't see anything from that. Only when it comes to getting a publishing deal, there are uh, hurdles that you have to come overcome, you know? And they're not always right the best hurdles. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's an art, so it's, also, it's subject to interpretation. So um, if it was a contest, you know, how would you determine what the best written thing is? Um, I do think you have to be very good 
to get a publishing deal, but it still is um, art. So you have to appeal to people, and it's a lot of timing. So you got to meet an agent. So you got to meet, uh, and the agent's got to get people interested in you so you can get a publishing deal. So there's a lot of likes and dislikes that are involved. So by the time you see how um, people who get publishing deals, um, the makeup of, of people who get publishing deals, it is a result of all of those opinions. Okay? Right or wrong, it is what it is. Okay? So, um, I don't personally know how to explain that. Okay? I have no answer for that question. Right? Now, I do have observations that I've made. Um, when it comes to black science fiction. Now, mind you, a lot of the black people or um, women, because it only really comes to to mind maybe a handful of women um, and maybe one black male who's really, um, or two, right? One, I just read uh, a novella that they got published um, um, that have gotten books published by major um, publishing houses um, in the mainstream, right? Somebody gets their books on the shelves of Books A Million or Barnes and Nobles, okay? If that's what we're talking about. Obje uh, available for, you know, all of the top awards, not an independent published writer, right? So, of those, I'm, I'm, I'm just going by that. There is a difference between those that get publishing deals and get their books to um, Barnes and Nobles, and those and the demographics and the visual of of uh, independent writers. And um, one of the things that I think there is a possible difference in story, and I've read like five or six of man, I've read about seven, almost. Everyone except for maybe one of the major published black writers, I've read their books. And there was a new one that just came out um, late last year or early this year. I got to go and check that book out. But that one withstanding, of the other previous seven, I've read six of them. Or at least all except for one, because I can only think of one that I didn't read a story from. Um, the difference is... Uh, in the story, yo, I'm keeping it keeping it 100. In the independent black publishing world, um, there is a lot of um, slavery settings, right? Um, different from say Octavia Butler's slavery settings, they aren't colorless. Whereas Octavia Butler's um, slave stories. Uh, say story, stories that had slavery settings were colorless, meaning they showed the um, spirit of the person. Many of her characters were victimized by black people as well as white people, and almost color really didn't matter. Um, they were, you know, one of the ones, even when the ones were invaded by aliens, race was a not the central issue. It was really humanity. And people of races were victimized, uh, but that wasn't the central story. Now, in, in the independent black sci-fi world, you know, people's going for race straight on. They, you know, they're overthrowing the, the, their black, first of all, so the people are not spiritual beings. They're black. And not to use you know, Octavia Butler as the only example, but um, I'll get to some of the other ones, but that's one and that kind, you know, contrasts from how Octavia portrayed them. Um, but yeah, they, you know, the black people are victims or heroes are rebelling in a system of oppression by white people, pretty much the way history was. Um, and there's no exaggeration, no change. You know, I got a story of a, a real black pirate you know, black Caesar, and he's, you know, rebelling against 
on the high seas against the slave trade. Very real. Okay. Um, and then you have other stories in, in, in the space speculation where um, the color continues, right? Color still becomes a factor where um, I, there's a story of uh, a space story where black people go out in space and actually ha have um, more power and military might than the white people in space, right? Now, they've colorized space, but if you've grown up watching Star Trek, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, even as, you know, even late as Krypton with the TV show they did on Star Sci-Fi Channel, you'll see either multicultural societies or straight white planets. And you will close your eyes and think the universe is whiter than Earth. You know, on Earth, white people only make up 10% of the Earth's population. That might even be changing because the birth rates are really changing in European countries. Um, but do white people make up 10% of any space stories? Serenity, Starship Troopers? No. Um, Hitler even wrote the characters in Starship Troopers to be South American, but they were white in the um, t in the movie. So um, that becomes a, an obstacle in the in the stories that I've read in mainstream. The black characters and the black people don't have the same power. They're either magic Negroes realize their powers and there's no explanation for it they just happen to be more powerful or more gifted you know than other cultures um or they um are not really stronger they're fleeing oppression and somehow they may luck up and escape the might of the of the white um humans or other aliens, other alien people. Um, what's another one that I heard? Um, even in, even in the, uh, what do you call it? The sword and soul or sword and sorcery, the fantasy realm, which is also part of, of the black science fiction or, or part of science fiction. You know, the Hobbit type stories. Um, it's, it's just black. And um, we are just as we are Game of Thrones, you know. We are just as brutal as 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 um they are in Game of Thrones, and um without any variation. And I'll say that that may be a disservice. I don't care how much you don't want to give Africa credit for being different than Europe, but. Native Americans empires, Chinese empires, uh, 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 South America empires, African empires, European empires. Yeah, they all had conflicts, but they weren't all the same type of conflicts. Game of Thrones is a European empires type of conflict. The way they conflicted in China was different. Were there conflicts? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But they were different. And when we read a lot of the conflicts in mainstream African sci-fi fantasies, we're very much, you take color out and they behave just like um, uh, they behave in Game of Thrones. Maybe sometimes to degrees of different, different levels, but it's still the same thing. And, um, and maybe that's due to our ignorance of our own African pre-colonial empires. Um, because I don't know any textbook on it. All I know is Chancellor Williams, you know, destruction of African civilizations. Um, but other than that, there's not too many books that African Americans know on pre-colonial African history, which would be the history of the empires, you know, um, pre-Arab invasion, you know, we don't really have those books. So I don't know. Um, I think that to me is an a difference that I see when I read African American or black sci-fi fantasies 
It's not that problem. Many times they're more, they're stronger than the Europeans in the stories, you know. So maybe that's the difference. Maybe our stories are more um, empowering to black um, people. And that is something that subliminally taints our stories from the mainstream. Uh, you tell me what you think. I have, I don't know. I'm just speculating at this point. All right, peace.